Hey guys, my name is Eric Wall. I am a graffiti artist as well as an author of a best selling business book, Unthink. And you are listening to Pavlina's Kids Place here in Florida. Hey everyone, I'm Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place. We are here at the Wyndham in Orlando and we are getting ready to talk with Eric Wall, who is a motivational speaker, graffiti artist, and an author of this really cool book. I started to read it. It is pretty darn amazing. Okay, good stuff right here. It's called Unthink. So we're gonna go talk to him. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Place. I'm here on location in Orlando with graffiti artist, motivational speaker, and author of this awesome book. Yeah, came out June 4th. June 4th, was that right? That's correct. June yeah. 4th, 2013. Yes. Yeah, it's an awesome book. It's, it's crazy cool. So, Eric Wall, guys, right here. Hey. So, graffiti is actually one of the coolest things I think of in kids. You know, I know we're all into graffiti. It's a cool thing for kids. So, did you start off with graffiti and, like, as a kid and everything? I did not, actually, at all. My, my store is very unconventional. Um, I didn't even... Uh, pick up a paintbrush until I was 30 years old. So I spent my entire educational career and the first part of my adulthood as an academic student and then a business suit with short hair swept neatly off to the side. I played by all the rules. Um, it was very conventional, very traditional, uh, very pedestrian. Uh, to the point in looking back, I lived such a conservative life that sometimes I wonder if I really ever lived at all. Mm -hmm. And so at the age of 30, through a number of setbacks, challenges, bumps in the road that everyone has in their life, um, I ended up letting go of everything that I had had, or it let go of me. Um, I hit rock bottom and emerged out on the other side as an artist, where I first started playing with art. Uh, started with oil painting, watercolor painting, figure painting, moved over into sculpture, photography, poetry, singing, songwriting, and then kind of landed on graffiti. After mm -hmm. falling in love with uh, Banksy, with Shepard Fairey, with Invader, with a lot of the um, very well-known graffiti artists, uh, and the message that they were getting across, and how cutting edge and provocative they were, and how I had a message that I wanted to share with the world, mm -hmm. and uh, graffiti, ultimately ended up being the channel by which that I use. And it's very ironic because I speak, I, I share in a very conservative environment. I speak uh, in front of Fortune 500 businesses um, to very conservative suits. And I come in as a graffiti artist, uh, which has them scratching their head a little bit. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm shaking things up. I'm twisting perceptions on what they normally thought to be true. And so one of those perceptions is on graffiti, mm -hmm. uh, which really, it's just been in the last hundred years yeah. that the word graffiti has been hijacked by criminals or vandals or crooks. Um, prior to that, graffiti was how we captured our history on cave walls. That's how we shared our story. That's how we um, passed on legends yeah. um, was through graffiti. And so that's what I'm doing, is I'm redefining what the term graffiti is, means, and is going to be. Uh, and at the same time, long-winded answer to your question, but it's important for me to share. Uh, it's also when I go and speak to inner city kids, mm -hmm. when I go and share at correctional facilities or at prisons, there's a different perception when a graffiti artist comes in versus if it's a pastor of a church yeah. or a leader of a uh, company or an author of a book you know then they they've got their arms crossed yeah. and they're like what are you going to what are you going to lecture at me now mm -hmm. it's like i'm i'm coming in as an edgy graffiti artist yeah. so i already have their attention at a little greater level i already have their respect from the street at a little greater level and with the youth, and there's been such a um, kind of positive uprise with graffiti recently uh, that I'm, I'm getting their attention and being able to move ideas and ideology towards a positive. So rather than just be a negative surrounding graffiti, is actually move them towards positive uh, imagery. You're a very creative person. So when you were like that pedestrian mm -hmm. kind of thing, did you think you were very creative then? What made you so creative? 
Not at all. Uh, in fact, I was uh, the antithesis of creative. I, would, I was one of those per persons who said, I, I can't even draw a stick figure. Uh, I can't. I can draw... Yeah, see, like, uh, or, or I would say, you know, I don't have a creative bone in my body. And I would let creatives be creative, and then I would do my analytical thing. I would mm -hmm. crunch numbers, I would do math, I would do science, I would uh, score well on spelling tests, mm -hmm. because I had control over that. Like, I knew I could study and memorize um, this particular part of the history exam. I could memorize these formulas for mathematics, mm -hmm. and I can read this section of the story and be able to regurgitate back to my teacher the few items that she needed so I could score well. And if I scored well, I get patted on the back and I'm told I'm a good student. Yes. So I get my A grades, and so that's what I was rewarded for. If I drew a picture, no one's there to reward me or say, hey, that's really great. Mm -hmm. um, you get an A on that and we're gonna advance you to the next grade. So many of us, we, we all read and write and can do arithmetic at very, very advanced academic levels, yeah. but yet we still all draw like five-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's largely because that's when we stopped drawing. That's when we moved towards this academic model of just simply reading and writing and arithmetic. And those pure drawing skills, those creative skills, got the kibosh put on them. Whereas if, you know, you who say you can't even draw a stick figure, me who couldn't draw a stick figure, if we were continued to be encouraged down those lines, mm -hmm. um, they would have advanced, just like our reading and writing would have. Anyone can draw. Everyone can draw. It's just a matter of that we critique ourselves and we give ourselves negative self-talk, like I can't draw a stick figure. And so we don't, and we never do. And so it never advances past age five. You're a dancer. Mm -hmm. At age five, you probably weren't ready to star and, you know, in the Nutcracker Ballet. You weren't on point yet, but you had an idea, you had a passion towards dancing, and so you practiced, so you continued, and so your dancing evolved like your mathematics evolved, like your reading evolved. Mm -hmm. And so art the same way. So when I'm sharing with, with kids, when I'm sharing even with adults, I'm saying, listen, it's never too late to start. Yeah. There's always that place, our five-year-old imaginative creative self, where you can take all the success you've had in reading and writing, arithmetic, getting grades, getting a great job, getting promotions, dancing, whatever it is that you've excelled at, you can also go back and reopen up those channels to the creative side of your mind. Um, and it's not just drawing or painting or graffiti. Um, and that's what my, the book that I wrote was about, is it's every single area of your life. It is problem solving. It's asking new and creative questions in interviews that no one's ever asked before. Mm -hmm. It is getting in touch with unusual interviews that maybe other people haven't interviewed before, but they're the breaking, cutting edge, fascinating interviews that your viewership, your kids really want to see. You know, they, they've seen a lot of the traditional interviews and they give the traditional answers because that's what they're coached to do. Yeah. But you break outside and all of a sudden you open up that landscape into new and creative ideas, boom. What used to be linear or pedestrian all of a sudden becomes cutting edge and uber cool. Yeah, and basically what you were saying like with like teachers and parents and even your parents, you know, sometimes like uh, and bosses and everyone, they all kind of cut you down. Like you always, you always have to draw inside the lines. So how can kids really break out and show their creativity? It's not even as much that, and it's not that they're cutting us down. Mm -hmm. It's that they're very well-meaning. They just don't know any better. Yeah. Our parents, our teachers, they're coaching us like they were coached. It's an industrial factory model, you know, that uh, the way that they grew up was this very, very conventional, traditional way of of how to educate, how to learn, how to advance, yet the entire learning landscape has changed through social, mobile, and cloud. It, the internet revolutions basically uh, turned into a trust revolution, so yeah. everything's different. Um, so we can't parent the same way. We can't uh, lead the same way. We can't teach our kids the same way. Uh, so f for those kids who are in school, whether you're doing well or even not doing as well per this academic uh, continuum, if you're getting um, C's or struggling or it takes you longer to do the homework assignment than maybe you feel like it's taking your friends, 
that's a non-issue. That's, that's not an issue uh, for whether you're going to be successful in life. It's an issue right now as far as, you know, are, am I going to grade well and pass this class? Because you do need to pass these requirements to get to the next level. But if you're struggling in school, that's not a predetermining factor for if you're going to do well in life. That's one small, old school dinosaur uh, measuring stick mm -hmm. for how we've used in the past. Uh, and I see incredibly talented, creative kids, and we're losing them. Yeah. We're losing them along the way, and they're falling in the cracks because they don't fit into this old school model. And so I'm, I'm there breathing life back into these kids. Um, you know, the misfits, yeah. uh, the, the kids that feel awkward, the kids that aren't maybe scoring well in school. I'm like, Walt Disney, Albert Einstein, Leonardo da Vinci, Richard Brandt, like Charles Schwab. There's incredible examples of people who didn't do well or who were misfits or didn't score well in academic exams or in school, mm -hmm. but are the breakthrough leaders um, of the future, the game-changing leaders. Yeah. And that, that kind of stuff is super exciting for me. And in fact, and this is, this is going out on the provocative graffiti edge here, mm -hmm. um, but if you're doing really well in school, if you're getting straight A's, this kind of thinking is actually far harder for you to get your head around because you've been so uh, rewarded, so, um, so comfortable within this kind of old school factory model of, of how to experience success that it's very difficult to experience creativity because creativity is kind of ethereal, it's out there, it's mm -hmm. not black and white. I can't get a 100 out of 100 on my test yeah. on it. And so if I can't get a 100 out of 100 on it, I really don't have that much interest in it. Exactly. So uh, creativity falls by the wayside. The arts fall by the wayside. Music falls by the wayside. Dance falls by the wayside. I think there's incredible potential uh, within every one of those creative aspects for experiencing uh, a far richer, more rewarding life. So here's my advice for anyone out there. Um, let's say you're older than seven years old. You probably have started to critique your own ability to draw. If I were to ask five-year-olds who are listening to the show, hey, can you draw? They'd be like, yeah, 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 I can draw. By the time you reach age six, seven, 12, mm -hmm. 14, 18, it's like, no, I can't draw. Yeah. Because we have this, uh, it's called the voice of judgment. It's this uh, part of our mind that critiques everything that we do. So we say, well, I'd like to draw, mm -hmm. but I can't draw. Like, I can only draw a stick figure. If I want to draw a horse, my uh, drawing of a horse doesn't look like a photograph of a horse or doesn't look like an actual horse. Therefore, I can't draw. Therefore, I won't draw. So for me, it's, it's actually an exercise that I will uh, work with other artists. I'll work with other students. I'll work with other uh, business leaders and CEOs, and I'll have them draw under the guise of that we're drawing for the trash can. In other words, no one's going to see this, no one's going to critique it, and we're going to throw it away five minutes after you create it. Mm -hmm. But it's the process of doing it. And if for some reason it doesn't stink, if for some reason you actually capture something cool, boom, go ahead and keep it. But yeah. the goal is, is to go through the process. Because for me, even as an artist, I'm not creating so that I can hang it in a museum. I'm creating for the process of doing it. Just like you would dance in the mosh pit, mm -hmm. it's the process of just creating. Because the creation itself is that, uh, or the, the product itself is not what we're going for. It's the act of going through the motion mm -hmm. of actually creating, actually painting, actually writing a poem, actually sculpting, actually taking a photograph. Um, and that's another thing, you know, photography, you, yeah. you're talking about you do photography. Mm -hmm. um, so much immediate gratification from photography and yeah. the, the tools are so advanced mm -hmm. now that uh, you can take the simplest subject. You can take a leaf, which yeah. wouldn't normally have been, you know, I'm not fascinated with leaves. <laughs> However, you find the right lighting. You find the right angle that maybe someone hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, you maybe combine it with another leaf. And then you start building a picture. Yeah. It doesn't have to be uh, a high fashion, beautiful model. It doesn't <laughs> have to be the perfect sunset. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have, you know, those things have all been photographed before. Yeah. What can you find that hasn't been photographed and all of a sudden 
start seeing the world through different eyes mm -hmm. uh, because those are the things that open up the right side of our mind. And school's awesome for uh, building the left side of our mind, the mm -hmm. logical side, the algorithmic side, the mathematical side. But we have two sides of our mind. Mm -hmm. And if we don't use that side through the arts, through painting, through dancing, through photography, it's going to dry up and it's going to go away and we're only going to be this kind of heavy, left brain, logical, heavy person. We're, we're going to be able to do math really well. Yeah. We're going to be able to read really well, but we're not going to be able to problem solve that mm -hmm. well. And life is dynamic. It changes, and we've got to be flexible. We've got to be creative. Um, we've got to be able to laugh and have yeah. fun. Uh, and those things aren't taught in school anymore, so we've got to figure out ways to do it on our own. So you seem like a very, very cool parent, don't you? Like yeah, definitely. I've, I've got some awesome parents. They're crazy cool and everything. So what do you tell your kids about being creative and just life in general? Uh, same thing. I've got uh, three teenage boys. Oh, They're really? amazing uh, boys. And they, they happen to, even though I don't stress grades at all, they happen to all do very, very well in school. Hey, yeah. um, I've never once looked at their uh, grades or their report cards and said, you need to do this or you need to pick this up. Um, they're all self-coached um, because what I've done is I've created a future view uh, mm -hmm. for them. So I'm not worried about how they're, are and if they're studying for this test right now or have they finished this homework assignment. For me, it's about building a bigger picture. What do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. What kind of difference do you want to make? or What kind of impact do you want to make in the world? Okay. So if that's the impact that you want to make, if you want to be a rock and roll star, what are you doing along the way to develop yourself to get that? How are, yeah. you, how are you studying other front men? How are you studying music? Are you practicing music? Um, how are you listening to society around you? Are you able to relate uh, to the people who are doing very, very well and the people who aren't doing that well. Can, yeah. you, can you translate your singing and songwriting to be able to relate to the masses? Yeah. Um, if you want to be a Navy SEAL, uh, what are the uh, things that you need to be doing along the way to accomplish those goals? So as long as my job as a dad is to crystallize that future vision, that goal for what they want to do and be, yeah. And then once that's done, all the academics have since fallen into place. But for me, I'm their biggest fan on encouraging them to take the biggest risks possible and dream the biggest dreams and support them unconditionally along the way in those rides. So we have just been talking with awesome dude right here. His new book is called Unthink. It's a very cool new book. His name is Eric Wall. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Enjoy life. Have a great time. Be creative. Unleash, unlock, and, and un, unthink your life to uh, discover your best self.